Many of the conditions that we've mentioned so far are due to brainwave dysregulation. Neurofeedback addresses brainwave dysregulation directly. So what is brainwave dysregulation? Well, in order to understand brainwave dysregulation, you have to understand a little bit about brainwaves. Uh, there are four main brainwaves. Um, delta waves are produced uh, usually when we're asleep. Theta waves are produced just as we're falling asleep. Alpha waves are produced when we're uh, relaxed and stress-free. And beta waves are produced when we are externally focused. Those are the normal patterns of brainwave activity. Uh, when a person uh, experiences brainwave dysregulation, uh, which may be caused by many different things, um, those patterns, those normal patterns, um, become abnormal. So that a person sitting in a classroom, for instance, trying to pay attention to the teacher, uh, who should be producing beta waves, which is the external focus brainwave, um, starts to suddenly produce theta or delta, and they can't stay awake. This is interpreted by the teacher as not paying attention, and the student ends up in trouble, and we call that ADHD. Uh, many of the conditions that we mentioned have their own dysregulated patterns of brainwave activity. So if, for instance, you were producing too much beta wave, um, people that produce too much beta wave generally experience uh, generalized anxiety, uh, panic attacks, obsessive compulsive disorder, and things like that. Uh, people who produce too many alpha waves uh, very often experience uh, signs and symptoms of depression, uh, withdrawal and avoidance behaviors. So each one of the conditions that we talk about, insomnia has its own pattern, um, tics have their own pattern, learning disorders have their own pattern. Um, these patterns are associated with the symptomology that is, uh, that is prevalent in each of the conditions that we talk about. The brain uh, will produce the appropriate brainwave at the appropriate time in the appropriate instance. Uh, when it's regulated properly. Neurofeedback therapy takes abnormal brainwave patterns and makes them normal. When we have normal brainwave patterns, the brain is better to self-regulate itself and overcome many of the conditions that we've mentioned so far. Brain core neurofeedback therapy, the goal of all, all neurofeedback therapy is to uh, create normalized brainwave patterns. And, uh, and we do that through, uh, through operant conditioning. Uh, neurofeedback is nothing more than a learning modality. It's drugless, it's painless, uh, it has no side effects whatsoever. The, uh, the therapy itself is uh, basically a guided exercise for the brain to teach the brain how to produce the correct brainwave patterns at the appropriate times. Brain core neurofeedback therapy begins with a comprehensive evaluation. Uh, this evaluation includes a uh, quantitative electroencephalogram or QEG evaluation. Uh, during this evaluation, we are able to uh, read and record brainwave patterns at 12 different sites in the brain. Uh, our software then identifies where the brainwave patterns are abnormal, and then the neurofeedback protocols that we use are designed to specifically address those patterns that are abnormal in that particular patient. So for instance, if a patient is producing too much beta waves, the neurofeedback protocol for that patient would be to teach them how to produce less beta waves. And we do that through operant conditioning or a learning modality. Uh, a good example would be where the patient is uh, hooked up to the computer using uh, wires that are pasted to the scalp. It's completely non-invasive. There's no pins, there's no needles, it's painless. And, uh, and those, um, those wires are basically just reading the patient's brain waves coming from their brain. Um, the computer software then is going to uh, reward the patient when they're producing the correct brainwave pattern. So, for instance, the reward might be um, a, a, a DVD that the patient is watching. They could be watching a movie, and uh, the movie is either going to play when they're producing the correct brainwave patterns or stop when they're not producing the correct brainwave patterns. This is simple operant conditioning. Over time, the brain learns that if it wants to see the movie, it's got to produce the correct brainwave patterns. The brainwave circuitry is then um, uh, reestablished in the brain, uh, and the, uh, the, the new activation patterns that have been produced by the brain can now be used out in the normal environment. So now the child who was in the classroom falling asleep uh, is no longer falling asleep because they know now how to produce more beta waves and less theta and delta.